What is up Teachers on Fire? Today I want to show you how to make digital seating plans in Google Drawings quickly and easily using a couple of hacks that I can show you to make one in one or two minutes. Now why would you want to make a digital seating plan? Well, you may want to be able to customize copies for different months or weeks of the year. You may want to be able to share your plan with colleagues who may come into your room or teach your students. You may want to share it with substitute teachers or administrators. I don't know. Lots of good sharing options. Oh, and sharing it with students by posting it on their LMS, right? So lots of good reasons to create a digital seating plan. Let's get started. Our first stop is in Google Drawings where we're going to go over to new in the top left corner and hit new and more and Google Drawings. So that wasn't too difficult. Google Drawings. So call this my CD or the, you know, in my case, it might be the 8C seating plan and give it a room number. 222 two, two, or something like that. And then in the top, I like to sort of orient the room and the viewers. So I like to put front, front of the room and I'm going to center that text and I'm going to give this text box a one point border just so I kind of know, okay, here's the front of the room. Now put aside all of the conversation from Peter Lilliadal about defronting the room. <laughs> I mean, that's some good pedagogy, but we'll talk about that in a separate video. All right, so how do we make table groups using square tables? Here's a really fast way to do that. So create a square and you can do that right here. And we're going to put a text box inside it because we want a name. So to get us started, I'm going to put able in that text box. And I'm going to copy both the shape and the text box and hit control V. So now I've got another neighbor. Don't worry that Abel appears twice. We can go back and change the names later. And now I'm going to select the pair and duplicate them. So now I've got a table group of four. Now notice I can select the whole table group and orient it uh, very quickly and easily. So that's no problem. Now I'm going to select it using, again, just Control-C, Control-V. I'm going to copy it and this group, I'll leave at the same orientation, copy it again, maybe put this group over here, uh, sort of a mirror orientation. And over here, same thing again. Now notice, uh, I don't really have room to put in a fifth table group in the middle, right in the center, I made these squares a little bit too small. So how do we fix that? We can do that, at, we can fix it pretty fast. Here's how we would do it. Just select again, the whole table group and shrink it down. Um, so sort of shrink it to, oh, maybe that's too small. And I'll do the same thing over here. We're just dragging the group from the corner. And one more group to shrink down, I'll just drag from the corner and there we go. So let's say I wanna put one more in the middle. And there it is, does it fit? Yeah, basically, basically. They, this is the group that's got the front and center kind of view, right? All right, so you can play with that orientation. I might not have done that perfectly, but okay, that's bugging me. Let me straighten that out a little bit. Get over there. Okay. My lines, oh, they're still not perfect, but you get the idea. So then, of course, you want to go ahead and customize names, Brad, Chris, and this table group has got three boys. We need a girl, Denise. Oh, sorry, be nice if you know that reference, uh, Eddie, and so on. So it's it's a pretty simple process to change all the names and then go up to the share button. And here's where you want to share with your colleagues. Make sure they only have, let's see, I want to share with myself, my personal email. I Let's say you only give them commenting privileges because maybe you want them to have the ability to say, hey, I'd like to move this person but you don't want them to have the power to make that change without your knowledge. So you can go ahead and give them commenting privileges. Now, what about a table group where you actually want to use round tables? That is also possible. Let's see what that looks like. So go ahead and hit new and drawings. Let's start a new drawing. And now I'm going to start with the front of the room. In fact, maybe for the sake of time, I will copy this one into here. Now for the circular table, I'll start by drawing a circle and I can put chairs around it pretty easily. 
But of course, one of the catches is going to be that I want a text box inside each one. So I'm going to put a little text box here. And again, I'll write able. Or no, don't ask me about the why able, okay? That's just, it's just the name that came to mind. And then from here, now it wants to select the, the circle. I don't want it to do that. So I don't want it to copy the table group. So we can copy able. Again, I'm just using control C, control V. And maybe one more. Now keep in mind, these are all, you know, whatever orientation, you can still rotate these if you want to. Now if that's important to you. And I'm going to select both squares when I do that so that the name sort of rotates with it. Now, a lot of people won't care about this level of specificity. It's a tough word. All right. Now, but of course, the beauty again of the copy paste is once you have the group, you can hit Control C, Control V, and copy again. And like I showed you in the last seating plan, you can resize the group, resize the group, and reorient the group. So again, all I'm doing is selecting all objects together with my mouse, and it looks like I mutated. What did I do there? Okay, did I drag from the corner properly? There we go. Abe. Oh, I wrote Abe and not Abel. Okay. Anyway, you get the idea with the round table groups and you can go on and on, but the key, the real hack here is the selecting all items in a group. You can do that with your mouse or manually select individual items by holding down the shift key and just control C, control V. So that's going to speed up your seating plan creation and makes it pretty efficient. And then you've got the share button. You can share that with your substitute teacher, other colleagues, whoever it is that you want. Hey colleague, if this video was helpful for you, would you share it with someone else who may find it useful? Like the video, comment and subscribe to the channel and I'd be so grateful. Thank you so much and have a great week of teaching.